Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to The Butcher Circus, and today I am playing with a team that wasn't really suggested, but a team that showed up in the Discord server, so someone was uh, telling me about their climb to darkest rank and showed me the teams that they used. One of them had a, a gesture with exotic snuff, which I found quite interesting, but uh, definitely not ideal. And another of them was one that looked quite appealing, which is a very, a very aggressive occultist mark team, so that's exactly what I've decided to try out today. So, I am playing against Brent Wilt, which is a darkest opponent in the ladder. I have not played against this person before, and they have quite an interesting team. This looks like a very self-sustainable sort of team, with a, you know, Flagrant, of course, he's quite a tanky boy. The Crusader is kind of a defensive Crusader, not having Holy Lands and all of the, and stuff of the like, so I probably should have dropped out an uppercut in hindsight, but eh, I didn't, but I think, I think I'll think i be fine. I'm just gonna go aggressive here. I mean, I will say I started off with the Caltrips, as I usually do when I see an opportunity to go for it, and that is probably the biggest change I did when compared to uh, my actual opponent's team or, you know, the person that actually suggested this team is that they had, uh, what, they didn't have Mark for Death, so they had Uppercut, which, you know, that's fine. You already have a character to Mark here, and uh, you also have to come Hither, of course, but they also had Collect Bounty instead of uh, instead of Caltrips, but, you know, I just don't roll that way. I bring the Caltrips and uh, I will definitely try to spam it. So I'm gonna go for the aim shot here, but Shep, you're shooting into a repulse and your opponent has heals. You've said multiple times in the past that's just giving your opponent value, right? Well, technically yes, but my opponent misplays here by going for the heal. That is a misplay. Why, Shep? Why is that a misplay? Well, I'll tell you exactly why, because now I can... I mean, it's a misplay, but there really isn't too much else my opponent could have done. But the reason I believe it's a misplay is because now if I shoot you, I just go first next round, I go for the finish, and it's 100% kill chance. You could have risked the 55 there. If I had gone for the shot, I could have potentially gotten nothing out of it. And you could have, at the same time, had gone for maybe a stun on me, prevent me from getting the 100% chance, or maybe try to drop the block of light while you still can, things of the likes. There are different things my opponent could have done to maybe make the situation not so horrible for them, but this is kind of what I mean about teams that look good and look defensive enough, but uh, if you don't go first, and if you have a, a competent uh, a competent mark team, things will not turn out too well for you, as you can see already at uh, how this is turning out. Because having just one active healer and not using either of your regen characters, yeah, it's uh, kind of unfortunate. Noldby's smile is a good deterrent, it's not a great deterrent, it's definitely not enough to uh, prevent me from just uh, doing whatever I want here. So I'm gonna actually go for a flare, which is a weird move because, you know, you see the bleeds here, you think, well, he's, he values his Arbalest turn more than the Occultist turn, right? And while I technically do, I still feel like doing this, but I'm gonna have to risk it for the biscuit here. I'm gonna have to risk the 25% death blow chance. But Shep, just heal! Why don't you just heal here? And the occultist then stays out of the store, then you don't have to risk a 25. Well, the reason I don't do that is because then the next round, I, my characters will be worse off, and my occultist will still be dropping to the store, so I'll have to heal him again. While, instead of that, I could just click here. I, I could self-heal. I could self-heal. Yeah, but no, I'm gonna go for the, I'm gonna go for the aggression here. I just feel like it's better. My opponent doesn't have any good death load chances. They don't even have a confirmed hit chance. It's a 60 to hit and a 25 to kill. Of course, they get the hit, but thankfully they do not get the kill. But here's the thing. If you have a team that looks kind of like this, with, you know, a decent amount of, of uh, single heals, you know, that's not usually what you call them, but uh, an amount of heals that are decent, you know, they're kind of like average heals, like, yeah, 7 to 9, the occultists can heal for a little bit more than that. The reason these heals aren't amazing is because um, what's going to end up happening is 
the DOT and the strength is going to catch up to you because while my opponent might be spamming something like Hound's Harry and Festering Vapors, uh, or even the Reign of Sorrows and the Festering Vapors, I might be able to prevent them from killing me for a very long time if I just keep healing myself over and over again with the Musketeer and the Arbals, but when the Afflictions come in, that's not gonna happen anymore. And since that's not gonna happen anymore, I have to be very careful about it. But Chef, now you're healing yourself, what changed? Well, since I somehow managed to survive two death blows, because there is a touch of justice in this world, a dash, a spring of justice in this world, uh, I can now go for the self-heal on the occultist because I honestly don't have anything better to do than that, so that is exactly what I'm going to do here. Now, who's taking the most amount of damage? Probably you, right? So uh, let's go ahead and heal here. Now, there's two reasons why I'm going for the Arbal Seal. First, cure it bleeds. Second, if my opponent was really smart, no, they could have tried moving forward, but I still have to kill immediately. If they weren't dropping to their store here, like, if they could heal and move forward at the same time, then I'd still have the Musketeer to drop the ball and still bring the Crusader down to zero, but, you know, they're, they're gonna drop to zero, uh, regardless of what they do here. And yeah, I do 7 to 12. Do I want to go for collateral damage? Uh, not really. Honestly, not really. That's gonna open the door to redeem, so I'm just gonna shoot and take the kill. And while my opponent team might look uh, quite imposing, quite scary, having three frontline characters and an Eticorn in the back against a team that just has a purpose and a win condition that's very well defined, even though it has characters that are kind of weird. You know, having the Ecolus in the Mark team is a niche which works, usually doesn't work too well, but it does work. So you can you can try it for sure, but it's a niche that usually isn't isn't picked because he's a very squishy character. While his stab is decent, it's also lacking in terms of accuracy. So it's usually a character you don't really see, but even if you don't have the full-on meta setup on your team, if it has a well-defined win condition, and if it uh, knows what it wants to do, knows what it wants to achieve in a certain match, it's still gonna do quite well. Now, I'm in a bit of a rough spot here, because I can shoot, right? But it's a 70 hit chance, so it's far from ideal. So instead of going for that, I'm actually going to go for the aim shot here. I don't feel like going for the 70. And of course, my occultist pretty much can't hit the broad side of the barn from inside the barn. So I'm just going to click the occultist. I'm going to go for the heal onto the arbalist. And thankfully, I get a decent uh, heal. And now with the extra 22 accuracy from going last, I have a 92. And voila, there goes the anti grand health bar. Now, there's still a lot of things my opponent can do. They can go for the take off with you. I mean, they can go for the protect me, which would be horrible. They can move forward, which would be even worse. They can <laughs> go for the take cover, which would also be quite bad. Because if they go for the take cover, I just... Um I just dropped the ranging shot, but it looks like they go for the protect me. One of the worst, but not the worst, so now I have a bit of a decision to make. I'm thinking of being funny here. You know what? Yeah, let's be funny. Let's be funny. Let's be a little bit funny. I'm gonna go for the uppercut. This could turn out quite poorly for me, but I still think this is my best uh, chance of victory. I'm gonna go for the uppercut here. And now my opponent might think he's cheeky and trying to move forward just one position. Uh, but no, they do move forward to positions. That's kind of a misplay in my opinion. Most definitely a misplay, honestly, because I can just shoot you now. And while the Flatulent is a very good character, I don't think he can win this? Question mark? Maybe he can, though. Maybe he can win this. Yeah, there is a possibility. There is a possibility looming on the horizon. Well, how do I want to deal with this then? Uh, probably by acting Shep. Yeah, probably. How much DOT do I have on there? 14, that's fine. I'm gonna go for the shot here, and boom, okay, I take it. That's very helpful because now I can actually save two of my characters. What I wanted to do there was go for the shot, and after it didn't get the kill, I would heal the Arbalist, make sure she doesn't drop to the sword because she's the most important character to keep alive here, and as long as I keep the Arbalist alive, it's very difficult for the rest of these characters, all of them, to die at the same time, so if I can prevent that from happening, overall, I'll just uh, have a bit of a good time here. Now, while I would like... Oh, I have to save him. He can drop uppercuts. That would be atrocious. Yeah, I'm gonna save the bounty hunter. 
Uppercuts here would be absolutely ridiculous for my opponent to deal with, and Walter Fletchwood is a very strong character. I wonder if he can try and uh, weasel his way towards the victory here. So he's gonna go for the Reign of Sorrows, he doesn't get the death blow. Quite unfortunate if you ask me. My opponent failed, uh, what, three Death Star checks? Yeah, I mean, their team doesn't really have a well-defined win condition once again. It's not an immortal team for sure, its defense isn't even close to it. It's at the same time also not a not really a stress team. It's definitely lacking in terms of stress output. I mean, this Crusader has Sacred Blade and Stun, so it's definitely not a stress team. And uh, moreover, it also isn't really a damage team because it doesn't have finisher characters. So what was this team trying to achieve is my question. And yeah, it did not achieve too much today, at least not yet. Things could still go very sour for me very quickly if, uh, you know, the old selfish here decides to do a pass and then somehow the corpse timer... Oh, wait, the corpse timer would go away. Wasn't it round two that I killed the Crusader? No, it was round three. The Abomination was round two. It was round three that I killed the Crusader. So yeah, my opponent just got absolutely slaughtered in that match. So let's see if we keep we can keep on rolling with uh, Mark Occultist. All right, and here we go, straight into a match number two. This time against Doobie. Quite a cool name, Doobie Doobie Doo. And they have what appears to be a stress team. So instead of having a doggy here, you have a Crusader. Or instead of having a doggy here, you have an occultist. Okay, I like it, I like it. The only reason it's a bit weird is because if I go for a pawn on the occultist right now, then you probably want to move back twice, which isn't too good for you, but it's also not too bad. I mean, you can just move back twice here and probably chill, because you have an extra dodge there. And yeah, my opponent doesn't have the best trinket setup, I don't feel. I think they're, I think they're veteran, but... Uh, they do have the Fleshbound Grimoire, and they do have Rate of Execution with Hunter's Charm, so I'm pretty sure they know what they're doing here. So they're gonna start off with the Bolts, which is actually a very good move, because my team is lacking on the accuracy. I don't have any sort of accuracy buffs here. So right now I can just risk it for the 70, but there's heal and heal, so... And that's if I hit, of course, <laughs> which is uh, far from guaranteed. So I have to make a few decisions right now. Maybe... No, I really need to take this Occultist out. He's a very strong character. Well, you know, you gotta risk it for the biscuits. I'm gonna go for the 70, I somehow get a hit on there. Yeah, it's just, um, this team is definitely lacking in terms of things. It's lacking in tankiness, it doesn't have stuns, of course, as you probably noticed in the first match. Not, not even a single stun, not even like a, a black track stun, no, just absolutely nothing. It feels atrocious to play with, really. <laughs> and uh, not only that, it's also lacking on the... It's also lacking on the defensive side of things. Your best defense is literally the dodge on the occultist, as well as your overwhelming heals. You have Stitch and Embrace, which I didn't use a previous match because it wouldn't be too smart. But you do have that, you have the slot machine heal, and then you have two healers in the back line, which both get completely disrupted if you push the abomination, so don't let that happen. Two to three, so that's a 66 to, to get it, right? Two to three, not counting the... wait, no, you either do two damage or you do three damage, right? But, you know, you can get the crit and uh, do much more than that. So that's what I'm going for here. I, I just saw the hit chance on the stab and like 63. Nah, I'm not going for that. Yeah, 2 to 3. You either do 2 damage or you do 3 damage. So I went for a 50-50 rather, rather than a 63. So maybe not the smartest move. But considering the crits, it would go up to a 69. A total chance of uh, getting myself to do enough damage to bring the occultist down to zero, which is, of course, exactly what I want. So now I go for the sniper shot, I get the 82, and, you know, let's be honest, quite fortunate of me. This is why you should usually run monkey spawn the occultist, to prevent the bounty hunter from getting that come hit or value and just getting everything rolling. Because here's one thing that I learned, and this happened in the tournament. I was playing with a Mark team. I can't remember exactly which Mark team it was, but I was playing against a team just like what my opponent has here. Very optimized, very good at outputting stress. But the occultist, instead of having Calling Salts, which is a trash trinket, had uh, the very powerful monkey spawn and that extra little bit of dodge 
made sure that my come hither actually failed when I when I went first. Even though I had 128 accuracy, it missed. It missed, I think it was an 83% hit chance. And after that miss, even though I tried salvaging the situation, the match was essentially over. That's how that's how minute these things can be. You really need to go for the best chance of uh, actually surviving, because if you uh, or you know, I say surviving, but you know, killing someone can be considered surviving. <laughs> it's in sort of self-defense, I suppose. But in this case, if you do want to survive with your characters, you have to kill the enemy characters. So technically, what I was what I was saying was correct. But what I meant was, if you want the best chance of winning, you have to kind of manipulate the RNG to give yourself the best chances of victory. Even then, you can still lose, but you know. Such is the way of the Witcher Circus, that's exactly why we're here. Even if you're decisively winning, there's still a chance you might lose. Even if you're decisively losing, there's still a chance you might win. All it takes is good play and uh, a whole lot of RNG on your side. So my opponent now is forced to de-transform. The horror definitely did help. I have no idea why they went for Velo. I generally think that was uh, by, the, yeah, by the start of round 2. I have no freaking idea why they went for a move like that. Because they had an amazing setup right there. They could have clicked, healed themselves, the mark would be gone. Then if I tried shooting them, they could guard and boom, I can't break the guard. And the occultist is completely safe forever. The only way I could kill him was it was with caltrops. But caltrops into 30 prot, probably not going to be the kill. So, you know, was, was that a smart move? No, not at all. Here's another thing that's also not a smart move, <laughs> what my opponent just did. Why did you go Bork of White when you're already down this amount of HP? Your Abomination absolutely... The, the prot on your Abomination does not matter, so even though you have 20 prot there, it's it's literally not going to make a difference. And, uh, you know, because I have the mini ball for the armor piercing as well as the piercing coral, and while well, your crusader is just about to die. So this is interesting, because most people tend to say, like, oh, stress teams are so brain dead, you just spam bellow, right? And, uh, and you just win every time. Yeah, just look at this match. My opponent had a very good team. It's a counter matchup. This team should beat mine. It has a lot of direct heals. It has a lot of stress output. I can't break the guards. They have one guarding character. I can do literally nothing to break them, apart from having applied the mark already. So once the mark runs out, the string could stop working. The bypass guard versus marked. No, it's it's completely gone. And if you just do like one bell debuff and give yourself a little bit of protection, like with the block maybe even, that's... Uh, I went for the pull, but yeah. You know, kind of a, a weird spot to uh, to be in, you know, winning in this situation, because I don't feel like that's what should be happening here. Because of course, once the Man-at-Arms is the last character alive, well, he is a very solid character, he's not that solid. He can win if your characters are already at like... I let's say like 120 stress and you have like four of them and the afflictions are particularly bad if they're all masochistic it won't make a difference but if they're all uh, you know if they're all irrational or if they're all fearful or selfish or hopeless then maybe you still have a chance of victory but my opponent just completely disregards that <laughs> that poor abomination's life and i'm actually gonna go for the win through stress here because I can't really do too much with the sacrificial stabs, so I'm gonna do weakening curse and then I'm gonna start spamming the the buckshot into the bowl. I'll hopefully do it twice, get some few good knockbacks. I might go for I could go for a flare here, but I'm just gonna do yet another bowl. Please don't push the corpse. Okay, thank goodness. And now it's only a matter of time before I win, because my opponent goes for the battle here. There's still not enough stress to afflict me. Oh maybe there is. What? Is, is that the command to surrender? It's gotta be, right? It isn't. It's not the command to surrender. What is my opponent thinking? What is he cooking? <laughs> what is he cooking, I ask of you? And yeah, right now, honestly, I don't even need to go for the... I don't even need to go for the clear anymore. I'm, I'm probably doing enough damage here, even without a crit. Now I get a mineral on it, of course. But now it's just the musketeer shot into the finish him and another opponent slaughtered in the ladder. 
So if you slip up just a little bit against this team, yeah, things aren't going to work out too well for you. But if you have a team that has a lot of guards, has good defense with regens, has maybe even a little bit of dodge, you can see just how easily this team will crumble because it can't deal with regens, it can't deal with dodge too well, it can't deal with guards after after the mark is gone. So if, uh, if you have... A, either a very defensive team that knows how to protect itself you can win for sure and if you have a very aggressive team that can kind of collapse on the front line like maybe with abomination slams then you can also win for sure because not only abomination slams but uh, just like two zealouses if one of them is a crit the occultist is literally at death's door by then so <laughs> it's really a very squishy team but it's fun but if you want to play something that's this, but in my opinion, quite literally better, just put the dog in position 1, give him 2 dodge trinkets, and give him his mark, which is way better than the occultist stab. And why is it better, Shepherd Doggy? Well, for starters, he's a much tankier character, he's gonna have 42 dodge. You can also bring the target whistle and the hounds very nice ability as well. You can bring the blackjack instead of the heal, because you're gonna be in position 1. And you can just bring the team like this, this is called the... No, this isn't old gold. This is the Howlers, it's called the Howlers. And his mark actually applies a minus 30 prop debuff, so if you have to deal with prot, here's minus 30, here's minus 20. Prot doesn't exist. So a very fun team to, to play with, and kind of to play against. It still suffers against dodge, but uh, overall, very cool team made by my brother. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.